Thank you, Mr. Joshi. It was an excellent presentation, which uh, has all the advantage for uh, not only for the India, also for refiner. Ref as a refiner, we don't find we are not getting availability of the ethanol, while this technology helps the uh, farmer as well as to the environment and farmer gets the income, environment pollution is reduced, and refiner gets the ethanol to blend it to the MS. So for this, uh, again, uh, this technology is uh, very useful for the country. Now, the, after this presentation, I would request now Mr. Sanjay Loda to be, who is a global business director of Tuba Court, a subsidiary of Tubex Group of Spain. Sanjay brings with him a 26 years of experience in a commercial sales, business development, management, license technology, process engineering, and operation of oil refining and chemical industries across US, Middle East, India, and other international markets. Prior to joining TubaSex, Tuba Sex, he worked with the Shell USA, Chevron USA, Evonik USA, and Dow Chemicals where he had acquired vast knowledge and exposure of the refining and petrochemical industry. Sanjay holds an MS Chemical Engineering from University of Odaho, USA, and Advanced Negotiation Executive Management from MIT, USA. Now over to Sanjay. Thanks. Amar uh, Kumar, can you hear me? Perfect. Thanks uh, very much. I think it's good to know Amar Kumar. I spent a lot of time with the SR. Uh, during the time he joined and uh, it was founded. So I appreciate a big audience here. Uh, today I'll be speaking mostly uh, downstream uh, applications in the refinery, critical equipments and petrochemicals. Uh, the use of this innovative technology called Tuba code, how can you use this for the critical applications? So two areas of applications I'm going to focus on. One is the the coking and the fouling in critical refinery conversion units such as whiz breaker, delayed coker, CDU, VDU. On the account of coking, you have significant unplanned shutdowns and you have spalling and mechanical pigging. And of course, these conversion units, you spend significant amount of time and effort in terms of the dollar value when you shut them down unplanned. And this technology prevents, minimizes the spalling and the pigging that you require. The second uh, application is, is corrosion is the cause of more than 25% of the failures in the refining and oil and gas industry. According to the NACE, on an annual basis, we spend more than $25 billion in upgrading the metallurgy, the downtime, uh, many other things, uh, getting the, the heavier metallurgy. So that's the second application I'm going to focus on. I will take you through many case studies quickly in the next 18 minutes or so, so you have a feel for uh, the, the case studies and the real life examples, okay? So a little bit on the parent company. So Tuba 6 uh, is one of the leading suppliers of the, the seamless stainless steel pipes around the world with the 16% global market, more than a billion dollar in sales and with the global footprint, headquartered in northern Spain and having manufacturing in more than 25 countries, including India. We have a sizable plant in, in Gujarat. So we make our own steel so we can control the quality, and then we take you through the entire process of extrusion, cold finishing, and we can make pipes as big as 40 inch in diameter, as small as half inch, but we supply to the refining and petrochemical industry. So what is tuba coat? So I'm going to take you through what this tuba coat is, what are the properties, and why does it work for the applications I mentioned. But it's got the outstanding corrosion resistance properties in any media, any thermal conditions, whether it's a hydrochloric acid or a sulfuric acid or temperatures up to 800 degrees Celsius. A very good abrasion resistance because the hardness is four times your base substrate, whether it's an austenitic steel or a carbon steel or Hastelloy. It gives you the hardness that's four times. And it's got a very good anti-fouling properties because the surface is as good as mirror without any roughness. And it's chemically inert, so it prevents the side reactions that promotes the coking reaction. So I'll take you through that. We probably spent close to 10 years in developing this technology in Spain. Uh, since we make the steel, 
uh, this was a value added service to our customers, especially in the refining and downstream industry. So these are the applications. What I'm focusing on today is the any refinery heater or furnaces, heat exchangers, and the condensers, uh, which are the prime targets for this technology to be applied. And I will take you through some of the morphological, chemical, physical, and thermal properties. So you have a feeling for why this technology works, what is the logic behind for this technology to work. So this coating, as you can see in this slide, is just uh, 0.1 millimeter or 100 micron. And we control it through our manufacturing know-how. It's a unique thickness across the length of the pipe. And it's just 0.1 millimeter. And we're able to control the technology part of the thickness and other properties. So one of the key properties you can see is, if you look at this slide, what you would see is, let me see. Yeah, so this is any substrate. It's austenitic steel. That's not coated, and this is a ceramic coated same substrate. And what you see is, by coating uh, the tuba coat technology, you reduce the roughness by 97%. And we know the basic logic. The smoother the surface, less is the chances and tendency for fouling. Uh, rougher the surface, you have a metals in the feed, you have contaminants in the feed, they come and deposit, and that further extends the fouling. And so we eliminate this property by giving you a surface that's completely more like a mirror. Abrasion is another good property to have, and this slide shows over the 10,000 cycles we're able to reduce the abrasion of the surface by close to uh, 95%. And that's what I show in this slide here. If you look at this slide, is basically this is a substrate that's not coated. This is coated. And if you look at the calculations, we reduce the abrasion by 95%. So how about the hardness? This particular slide shows that we're able to increase the, the Vickers number by four times, from 220 to 840. So the hardness is another important parameter to have in high velocity, high turbulence regimes. And so hardness is four times. It does come at a cost. So you cannot, once you coat the pipe, you can elongate up to 1.5%. Beyond 1.5%, the coating uh, can be damaged if you physically bend it. So one of the key parameters in any refinery or chemical plant is the thermal resistance. You have a start of the unit, you have a shutdown of the unit, you have emergency shutdowns, so you have a quite a few temperature variations. What I show in this slide is temperatures going from zero degrees to 800 degrees, where you have a rapid heating and rapid cooling. Uh, absolutely, the coating, as you can see, across the spectrum, the coating is intact. It works perfectly fine in the whole regime for any rapid heating and the rapid cooling. The fouling rate, so this is the work we did with the Shell Oil Company, and you can see we tested the crude oil, which is one of the heaviest fit that you can have in the refinery. And over the seven months, what you see is the blue curve is the regular carbon steel, and the red dots for a standard velocity of 1.2 meter per second. You can see the fouling is three times lower with the coated tube as compared to the uncoated tube because the fouling is simply avoided with these coated tubes. Just as an example to tell you that this coating works with almost any media, I show you here one with the hydrochloric acid, which is a 10% hydrochloric acid. It could be naphtenic acid in your crude unit. It could be uh, sulfuric acid that show both liquid and the vapor. And these coatings remain intact. So these coatings now are being uh, tested for the ionic acid alkylation, uh, successfully approved by UOP in the US. So in summary, the, the property wise, why it works is because uh, this is a chemical bonding of the coating with the substrate is just 0.1 millimeter. And then it goes through a process called vitrification which gives that chemical bonding. And because of that chemical bonding and the very low porosity, corrosion resistance is very, very high. 
So now we're working with the refiner in India, uh, one of the largest refiner in the world. They have a huge corrosion in their vinyl chloride monomer plant. They corrode even the Hastelloy 276 with the tungsten carbide coating every six months. It basically eats the whole assembly. And now they are planning to use the new technology we're going to provide. The roughness is reduced by 99%. That gives you a very good anti-fouling and clogging resistance. Hardness is four times. That gives you a very good abrasion resistance. And they are chemically inert, so they prevent all the side reactions that you would have. With that, I'm going to move now to the real applications. So the first one is the tuba code for the anti-coking solution. So it works two ways. One is it minimizes the coke formation because it's chemically inert. So the coke forming reactions are essentially stopped. But once you make the coke, it should not deposit in your heater tubes. So forming is one part. Second part is a deposition. And you don't want the deposition in the tubes. The coke should move on to your downstream coker drums or where it's supposed to go. So since the surface is very smooth, it prevents or it promotes the anti-fouling. And because of that, you have a longer run length. You minimize the online spalling. You minimize the mechanical speaking. The fuel consumption savings about 3 to 5% because the surface is very clean, much better heat transfer. And so carbon footprint is lower. The fuel consumption is lower. And safety and reliability. Since you don't shut down as often, you don't have to bind up the units. Uh, hydroplast, clean get the people to work on it, uh, your reliability of the unit is significantly better. So I will take you through an inertness study. We took the chemical compound called dimethyl ether. We cracked it. It is equivolar. It doesn't crack into carbon. It cracks into the compounds like methane and carbon monoxide. But if you have a side reactions, then you end up making a lot of carbon, which you don't want. So this reaction shows uh, without coating and with the coating, when you look at this particular chart, what you see is when you don't have a coating, you start the unit and do it, shut down and start second time. The second time, your activation of carbon forming reaction for the 10% 10 10 convergence at 100 degrees earlier. So every time you shut down a Dillard coker unit and start again, coke forming reaction happens much faster. But if your tubes are coated, then there is absolutely no difference in promoting the carbon formation. It's identical because the coated tubes are chemically inert in preventing the carbon formation. So this one is on how, how much carbon do you form. So if you look at this slide, without coating, significant carbon formation. With coating, maybe 10 times lower. And this shows the carbon inertness or the, the, the deposition. And what you see in this slide is, this is the CO2 measurement curve that shows the carbon deposition because we combust. And this is with the coated tubes. And that is 100 times lower deposition in these tubes. So in summary, the, the chemical inertness prevents the carbon forming reaction. Carbon formed is 10 times lower. And then carbon deposited in any heater tubes processing heavier feeds such as whiz breaker, delayed cokers, thermal crackers, VDUs, the deposition is significantly lower. So one example is this refinery in Europe, uh, 20,000 barrels per day unit, and one day of shutdown for this converged unit is about $400,000 per day because typical conversion cost is $20. So they have a frequent shutdown for pigging, huge loss for production, uh, preheat exchanger upstream of the unit also gets the plugging and, uh, and the fuel consumption very high because of poor heat transfer efficiency. So what you see in the picture is they install the tuba coated tubes along with the flanges and the bends and the OD is 4 inch. And uh, what you see as outcome is the very thin coke layer, there is a 75% reduction in the coke formation after nine months. Coke is significantly easier to remove. Uh, you don't need a very high pressure. And the online spying, timing, online spalling is now frequencies, maybe one fourth of the time you require it. So with this unit, uh, the savings of $1.5 million, 
per year. Most of it is coming from the throughput because you don't have to do the spalling and reduce throughput. And of course, the, the fuel consumption, 3 to 5 percent savings. Heat exchanger cleaning is not required. And so overall, a significant benefit with the ROI in less than six months. This is one of the largest cocoa units in, uh, in Korea, processing close to uh, 50,000 barrels per day feed. And they have a P9 chrome tube, which is very common for the <coughs> delayed cocoa furnaces. We have a P9 or P11 or 347H material. And um, this one had a spalling, as you can see, every 50 days. They have six passes. So they have about close to seven spalls per year. And, and during that time, the throughput is reduced to 85%. So about 42 days of days in a year, they run 85% throughput. With the, with the coated tubes, they only now have to do it only 12 days in a year. So saving almost 32 days of time. And uh, that's close to $3 million savings uh, roughly just for them on the account of uh, number of days you don't have to shut down. This one is a uh, resid hydrocracker in Canada. And I'm not sure if we have any resid hydrocrackers in India. Do we? Okay, we have one. Resid hydrocrackers, I don't think. These are Chevron licensed units. Uh, so they have these reactors with 800 risers that are crucial for the proper feed distribution. And temperatures close to 400 degrees, 130 bar pressure. And these resid hydrocracker risers, they get a lot of cracking because of the high velocity, because of the catalyst. And they have gone for the tuba coat because with coating, they minimize the stress cracking and other velocity related cracking and the benefits are to be evaluated, but that application was just installed very recently. So I think in, in a sense for, this resid, uh, for the fire heaters, they are very profitable, returns less than a year or six months in general, life cycle maybe three times, maybe four times, depending on the substrate and the application. And of course, fuel consumption wise, uh, three to 5% savings, reduced carbon footprint and a very reliable uh, in terms of the reliability, because you don't shut down the unit that often, and the coating is just 0.1 millimeter. So let me now touch the subject on the corrosion, take you through a quick few examples on the corrosion. So this unit is a waste to energy, uh, not necessarily renewable energy, but it's to waste to energy, where they take all the scrap uh, uh, from all over the place, and they try to burn it to create the energy. And what you see here is, the temperature is close to 850 degrees, and the corrosion is from the alkaline ash. And they have a quite expensive metal. They have a 16 moly. On top of that, they have something called cladding, four millimeter cladding, which is a very expensive option. And if you look at the picture, what you see with the cladding, the surface is very rough. Of course, that will promote the fouling and the corrosion. Plus, the thickness is four millimeters. So what will happen to your heat transfer? Of course, it will be reduced. So they tried that, and they tried the coated tubes. And after the two years, what you see here is the coated tubes are as good as brand new, and the 16 molly with the cladding is completely corroded. So end of the five, we went in, uh, now this is in running for six or five years, and the coated tubes are still running very well, absolutely no ash corrosion. A glossy surface, no loss of mass, and a very reliable operation. This, again, is a plant in the European region. This is a BP refinery in Washington state. Uh, they have a coker calciner that processes the green coke to make the needle-shaped coke for the other applications in alumina industry. And they have a very huge corrosion, you can see, with the, the reheater uh, coming from the bandage at high, 850 degrees Celsius. And they tried every metallurgy, every solution, and it didn't work uh, because the chemical corrosion efficiency loss was so big. And we just happened to meet them in one conference, and they said, we tried everything, so let's give it a try to your technology. So they went with the, the semi-trials. So they only took nine tubes, 
uh, quoted from us and rest of the tubes were unquoted. And when you look through a furnace window, again, if I look at this picture, the bottom tubes are the coated tubes, the top tubes are uncoated. The coated tubes are intact after 10 months, whereas uncoated tubes are all gone, melted, fully gone. So the BP liked the solution so much so that they went for fully coated 800 tubes uh, that you can see, and you see two different colors because we designed them for different temperatures, depending on your application. We can go up to 850 degree skin temperature. We can go 700. We customize these coatings depending on what the problem is. So let's see the results. So what you see after install, you have a, when you look through a furnace window, incredibly good temperature profile, no hot spots, no fouling, and across the length of the, the whole radiation section. And after 15 months, they're still doing it intact. So they got the three times Cycle length, absolutely $2 million in saving. And now BP has become our strategic global customer for this technology. So a couple other examples. Uh, these tubes can be coated from inside or from outside, from the shell side or from the tube side. Uh, the one example I'm showing you here is, uh, is the vacuum distillation unit overhead condenser um, that's coated from inside. And then we have a CDU unit that's coated from outside. These are just two another examples. They've been running now for close to three years. Again, they both are refineries in the European region. So over the last two years, I think we have reached out to many big customers. Uh, one of them is from India, but it includes all the major oil companies uh, in the US, US market and the European market and of course many other applications in power and gas. So I think the journey has been incredibly good for this technology over the last two years. And um, so much so that uh, we have built a brand new plant uh, to supply to the industry in northern Spain where we just make these uh, coated tubes. They can be applied to your existing plant. It can also be applied to a new plant. We can work either ways. And thanks for listening to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Loda. As uh, most of us here are from refinery or petrochemical, this uh, technology is very useful to all of them because uh, we can utilize in crude unit, vacuum unit, as well as coker. As he showed in the case study that the coker spalling reduces and uh, the strand length increases. So it not only reduces our carbon footprint, also it gives us profitability and safety and reliability. So this is a very good technology. We can adopt this. Now, thank